Welcome back to Sissy Maya. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. Additionally, consider subscribing to my Patreon to get access to these features, and much more. Mother, what's your costume idea for the party this year? I thought I'd dress up as the fairy godmother. Why? I'm drawing a blank. I anticipated this. You always procrastinate. Yeah, but. I saw this coming, so I got your costume ready. I'll spare you the suspense. You did. Awesome. What's mine? A spaceman? A robot? Not quite, darling. I'll be the fairy godmother, dad's the footman, leaving you the princess. Oh no. I'm not going as a girl. Yes, you are. Consider it a lesson in planning ahead. Let's head upstairs for your costume fitting. Moom. Follow me. It took nearly two hours to get me ready, and as uncomfortable as it was to wear a dress, it was even more unsettling to see myself transformed. It felt almost criminal. Instead of appearing as a boy in a dress, I looked stunning. Mom styled my hair, then added a curly wig that accentuated my features, elongating my neck. I was speechless. Wow, you look stunning. Mom exclaimed, then continued, I'll assist you in changing out of the dress, but I want your father to see you as a girl, so I have something else for you to wear. This turned out to be a sleek sheath dress. Mom helped me out of the gown and into the new dress. She seemed on the verge of fainting for a moment after I had it on. The shoes she provided were black heels to match the dress, and once I was fully dressed, she exited the room. Apart from the attire change, nothing else had altered, yet the person I saw in the mirror bore no resemblance to myself, which was deeply unsettling. I hadn't even questioned why she had prepared the other dress and shoes. Mom clearly didn't want me to revert to my usual appearance, so I descended the stairs and entered the kitchen, where my dad caught sight of me. Wow. Agreed. That was my reaction too. Our son is unexpectedly stunning. I never imagined he'd appear so. Feminine? Mom interjected. All right, all right. I get it. I retorted, feeling flustered. I'm beautiful. But this is just for the party, then it's back to normal. Of course, Dad reassured, we didn't have any other plans, but wow. On the day of the party, Mom and I will dedicate more time to her preparation, but it'll be worth it, especially when everyone sees her. What will you call her? Lily, obviously. She. Ha. Lily. It sounded like Mom had lost her mind, but after seeing her expression, I let it slide. After dinner, I headed to my room to clean up, taking a shower before slipping into my robe. However, when I returned to my room, there lay a nightgown on the bed. I picked it up, almost able to see through it. As a gesture, and perhaps to tease Mom, I decided to try it on. Surprisingly, it was quite comfortable. I spent some time on the computer before going to sleep. That night, I had a bizarre dream, I enjoyed. Well, it was strange. In the morning, Mom made it clear, with no room for argument, that I was going to have to practice being a girl for a whole week. She disregarded my protests, insisting that to wear the gown, a delicate pale blue chiffon and satin creation, I needed to embody a certain elegance, meaning she wanted me to not only look like a princess but also walk, talk, and behave like one. I understand I'm dropping this on you last minute, dear, but you do see why it's important, don't you? Yes. To make you happy, but. Yes, it will bring me joy. I wasn't even considering asking but when I saw how lovely you looked, I thought, for just this week, I could experience having a daughter. But if you're not up for it. No guilt tripping, mom. Why didn't you just ask? You would have said no. But this way, I get to have my daughter for a week, and you'll get the practice we both know you need. What if I decline? I'll be disappointed, not because you don't want to be my daughter for a week, but because you won't take the opportunity to do it properly. It's your choice, but I promise it could be a fun week if you give it a chance. Fine, I'll give it a try, but... Then let's approach this properly, shall we? Meaning? Meaning, let's start by removing all that body hair. All of it. All of it. Shall we begin? 
She knew that I would give in, I always did, so she was relentless as she used both chemicals and a razor to remove every hair below my eyebrows, rubbing in a lotion to make my skin softer. As if by magic, she pulled out clean panties, which I quickly put on, then she sat me at her vanity to do my makeup. Telling me to watch what she used, she began with the foundation, then powder, some eyeshadow, eyeliner, and mascara, then the blusher, all before she started in on my hair. I thought my hair was too short to do anything with, but mom managed to create a hairdo that was not only feminine, but looked good. Taking me back to my room, she pulled out what looked like a corset. Oh no, please, not that, mom. You'll require it to properly fit into the dress after I adjust it. So, quiet down and hold still while I handle this. Women have been wearing these for ages, and it won't harm you to present yourself in the best way possible, which I know is what you desire. So, stay put. When she was done, it looked like I had a small chest, which became bigger after she reached in and pulled the compressed skin up, padding the underside at the same time. Then, Based on the cleavage mom created, it looked like I was a very healthy girl. At the same time, my hips looked wider, but only because my waist was so much smaller. At her urging, I sat on the bed and pulled the pantyhose on, then she gave me a dress to put on. A different dress by the way. I slipped it over my head and she zipped it up, which is when I saw how low cut it was, and how my newly created cleavage made me look. The heels were pushed my way and I stepped into them. Turning, I saw myself in the mirror, and almost fainted. Come with me to the kitchen, sweetheart. I'll do your nails, and we can enjoy a drink. At that moment, I found myself being pulled into the identity of the girl I saw in the mirror, and quietly followed her to the kitchen. After grabbing a soda, she began working on my nails, filing, sanding, and buffing them, then she applied some sort of paper form to support the white substance she spread over my nails. This is acrylic, very durable. I'll extend your nails slightly and then paint them a lovely red. Will it come off easily? With acetone, yes, with some effort. Now, keep still. Mom worked on my nails, extending them slightly with rounded tips, then painted them a soft reddish-pink shade she called carnation. Afterward, I had to wait for the Polish to dry before she had me stand up, beginning my lessons on how to carry myself like a girl, where to place my hands, and so forth. For a while, bending my arms at the elbow felt awkward, but she didn't allow any slack, so I gradually adjusted. Knowing it wouldn't be a long-term demand made it easier to comply, and by the third day of practice, I could dress myself and follow her guidance more readily. On the fourth day, Mom laced me into the corset and had me try on the gown once more. It perfectly mirrored the images of the princess, featuring layers of blue chiffon over blue satin, with a bodice of blue satin transitioning into a delicate pale blue ribbon along the bust line. Off shoulder with a low back, the dress exuded femininity. You'll need matching shoes for Lily. I didn't purchase them because the sizes were too risky. Let me help you out of the dress. You can wear that skirt and blouse, then we'll head to the shoe store and select a suitable pair along with a matching bag. Outside. You want me to go outside? I had hoped we could avoid it, dear, but yes, we must. You need the shoes, and judging by your appearance, I don't anticipate any issues. Get changed. I'll wait downstairs. I was quite anxious by the time we left the house, but true to Mom's words, we headed straight to the shoe store. We found some silver sequined heels with two straps and a matching bag. I thought it was just for fun, but Mom also grabbed a pair of plain white flats, settled the bill, and we promptly returned home. Being outside was nerve-wracking yet strangely exhilarating. No one seemed to suspect I was a guy, not even the shoe store clerk. On our way back, Mom casually mentioned that we had hair appointments on Saturday morning. She said they could make the hairpiece resemble my own hair better. I wanted to refuse outright, but the thrill of going unnoticed kept me silent. Thus, on Saturday morning, I found myself sitting alongside Mom in the beauty salon. As the stylist worked, I sat there, confident that once this was over, I could return to my usual self, as Mom always assured me I could. However, by then, I was starting to appreciate my appearance, 
having overcome the initial shock. Though I'd never admit it, if she had asked, I might have agreed to a few more days as a girl. After she washed my hair and set the rollers, another stylist took over and began redoing my makeup. Removing the existing makeup, she adjusted my position in the chair and started shaping my eyebrows, not creating an arch but rather thinning them slightly, before proceeding with the makeup application. This is the finest product on the market, with a lifespan of about 18 hours. You should be set for tonight's party and possibly even part of tomorrow, she assured me. With that, she applied foundation, followed by powder and other cosmetics. Curling my eyelashes felt strange, but once she finished, I doubted anyone would guess I was male. I felt like the epitome of femininity. After removing the rollers, the hairpiece was securely attached and blended with my own hair. Without asking, she pierced my other earlobe and declared me finished. A single glance confirmed that it was going to be a memorable party. Mom and I returned home, where I indulged in a relaxing bath to restore my skin's smoothness. Wrapped in my robe, Mom and I had lunch before beginning our preparations. As I entered my room, Mom followed closely, ready to assist with lacing the corset, but first. I bought these for you. It might seem extravagant, but every girl deserves to feel beautiful. I thought they might have the same effect on you, she said, handing me a box. Upon opening it, I discovered a pair of pale blue satin panties. Expressing gratitude, I slipped them on just before Mom helped me with the corset. Once fully dressed, she assisted me with the gown before excusing herself to change. Left alone, I adjusted my flesh under the corset, enhancing my cleavage with the pads, and applied the perfume Mom had given me before donning the new shoes. The pearls awaited me on the dresser, but that's when Dad entered the room. I must say, you look absolutely stunning. I never would have guessed. Anyway, I got these for you to wear tonight. Let me assist, Dad said. Dad clasped the necklace around my neck, then handed me the earrings. They're genuine stones, so be careful not to lose them, all right? I won't, thanks, Dad. The necklace featured a heart-shaped blue stone surrounded by rhinestones, suspended from a delicate gold chain that rested elegantly at the base of my throat. The earrings perfectly complemented the necklace, enhancing the dress's allure. As I admired myself, a thought struck me. Why did Dad buy me real stones? Perhaps they were meant for Mom after this event, I speculated. After applying lipstick, I gathered my skirts and descended the stairs with care. I felt like royalty, and as much as I wanted to deny it, I couldn't help but feel proud of my appearance. Dad looked regal in his gold-trimmed white jacket and knee pants, while Mom was simply stunning in her pale pink gown. Dad escorted us to the car, and upon arrival at the venue, we entered together, Mom on one side, me on the other. The hall was filled with guests in various costumes, from spacemen to cowboys to dance hall girls and more. An usher guided us to our table, and about thirty minutes after dinner, the music commenced. Mom and Dad took to the dance floor, leaving me contentedly seated at the table. I was content to observe, but then a man approached wearing a navy blue jacket adorned with gold braid and featuring a Nehru style collar. Good evening. My name is Liam Tun, but everyone calls me Liam. I do believe this is our dance. Would you honor me with your company? I. I'm not much of a dancer, Liam. Maybe I should. Nonsense. Please, may I? He grasped my hand, and before I knew it, we were dancing. I felt quite apprehensive about dancing with him at first, but he proved to be a skilled dancer, and within minutes, I began to relax. As the music shifted to a waltz, a choice many declined, Liam held me closer. You forgot to tell me your name, he remarked with a smile. Lily, I replied, offering him the name Mom had chosen. When the music ceased, he escorted me back to our table. My parents were seated there, so I introduced them to Liam. Your daughter is a stunning young lady. I'm surprised she doesn't have a date tonight. We felt it would be best, Mom interjected, for her to meet new people. Of course, I'm honored, madam. Turning to me, he added, and thank you for brightening my day, Lily. After he departed, Mom exclaimed, 
Well, he seems quite the catch, and handsome, too. Moom, you must admit, Lily, he seems rather taken with you, and it's not hard to see why. Enough, you two. You know that's not me. I observed him dancing with several other girls, then later, he returned to our table with his parent. After introductions were made, he invited me to dance again. Seeing Mom's encouraging smile, I accepted his outstretched hand, allowing him to guide me onto the dance floor. Despite our parents engaging in conversation, it was difficult to ignore Liam and his charming smile. I realized Mom had been right about him, and if I were a girl, I might have been tempted to pursue him further, but I wasn't, so. Would you grant me the honor of escorting you for the grand promenade? It would be the highlight of my day, Lily. I suppose that would be fine, Liam. I'll look forward to it. What else could I have said? No. He believed I was a girl named Lily, and I had allowed him to think so by dancing with him. As the parade began in the hall, with people showcasing their costumes and laughter echoing around, I started to wonder if they had forgotten about us. Then, I heard. Liam Tun Michael, Prince, heir to the throne, and Cynthia Michelle. He approached our table, took my arm, and I placed my hand on top of his, both of us extending our arms slightly, and we circled the room. My parents followed behind us, then his. We were the last ones to make the rounds. Once it concluded, the announcer requested Liam and me to lead the dance. As he bowed, I instinctively curtsied, then allowed him to lead me onto the dance floor. Glancing out at the onlookers, I noticed some of the girls he had danced with, and it seemed like each one was giving me a disapproving glare, or at least that's how it felt. Later, Liam escorted me to our car, thanking me with a bow for a delightful evening. I was utterly taken aback, but managed to express my gratitude. Upon returning home, I discovered that I had lost one of the earrings. Panicked, I searched the dress but couldn't find it. Mom assisted me in removing my dress, and with a smile. Liam seemed quite captivated by you tonight. That's because I was the most stunning boy there, Mom. Not a boy, a young lady, for tonight, at least. You were truly remarkable tonight, Lily, especially with your curtsy before the final dance. Mom, I lost an earring. Dad said they were real. He'll be furious. We can check the lost and found, honey. Maybe someone turned it in. The following morning, still wearing the hairpiece, I opted for a skirt and blouse at breakfast, and strangely, no one commented. Mom later removed the hairpiece, styled my own hair, and just after lunch, I attempted to revert to my usual self, nearly succeeding except for the nails, which I didn't attempt to remove. The day after, a call came in asking for Lily. Lily? Hi, it's Natalie. Remember we met the other night? Well, I couldn't help but notice that stunning earring and necklace set you wore. Would you mind if I borrowed it? I'm sorry, Natalie, I can't. It's a very valuable set, and... I... Mom signaled to me discreetly, shaking her head to dissuade me from mentioning the lost piece. I... Well, my dad would be furious if I lent it out, sorry. Bitch, she spat before hanging up. An hour later, another call, nearly identical to the first, and another later in the day, leaving me perplexed about why these girls were so interested in my jewellery. By the time Dad arrived home, I still hadn't figured it out, but confessed to losing an earring. He took it calmly but appeared disappointed. Mom suggested it might be best to let the acrylics degrade before attempting removal, so I continued dressing as a girl. By Thursday, I received four more calls regarding my jewellery, raising suspicions. Mom had some news. It appears Liam found the earring lodged in his jacket and has been searching for the owner. Since he's quite the catch, those girls might think returning the matching pieces will prolong their chances with him. The girl I spoke to provided his number if you'd like to call him, I'm sure he'd be pleased to hear from you. I paused for a moment, then remarked, you went as the fairy godmother, right? And dad as a footman? Given the name you chose for me, evidently, I was meant to be Cinderella. Now we have a prince scouring the kingdom for the girl who lost an earring? Doesn't that seem a bit too much like a fairy tale? You didn't orchestrate this, did you? 
I mean, Lily isn't real, so how could he find her, me? He can't, unless we point him in the right direction, can he? But that would mean. So you'd have to continue being Lily, but I know you don't mind as much as you pretend. So why not? I can call the number the girl gave me, he'll come over, return the earring, and then you can go back to being yourself, just for a few hours. That's what I think, yes. Will you do it? It's an expensive piece, and would like to have it back, wouldn't you? Besides, it would make your father happy to get it back. I agreed, and Mom made the call. The appointment was set for Saturday afternoon, so I spent the morning smoothing my skin and getting ready. Mom provided a waist cincher and a bra instead of the corset, and I wore a skirt and blouse because Mom said it showcased my legs. The skirt, a plaid print, fell above my knees, while the blouse was white. I opted for white flats, and Mom styled my hair while I did my makeup. Promptly at four in the afternoon, a limousine arrived, and Liam stepped out, followed by his mother. He escorted her to the door, and when the bell rang, I greeted them. Hi, he greeted cheerfully. You remember my mother? Of course. Please, come in. After ensuring all the women were seated, Liam took a seat. However, it was his mother who watched me closely. After some small talk, I presented him with the necklace, which perfectly matched the earring in his hand. Smiling, he handed it to me. Her father was quite upset about losing that piece, and I'm grateful you took the time to return it, Mom remarked. You were quite elusive, young lady, Liam's mother added. It was as if you vanish. Michael couldn't stop talking about you and insisted we find you. I think he prefers you over that other girl, the one assigned to be his date. What was her name? she inquired, turning to Liam. Natalie. Natalie, something, I mumbled, trying to recall the name. Can I offer you something? I asked them. That would be lovely, dear. Something cold, his mother replied. I'll assist. Liam offered as I rose from my seat. Once in the kitchen, I heard my name. Turning, he pulled me into his arms, planting a kiss directly on my lips. I, I'm sorry, Lily, I couldn't resist, he murmured. It's, it's okay, but, I stammered. All right, you too, that's enough time for drinks. Mom's interruption was a relief, I wasn't sure if he would try that again. We returned with the drinks, sitting opposite each other. He observed me intently, so I was careful not to make any masculine gestures, especially with his mother present. We're hosting a small gathering next week, his mother mentioned. We would be delighted if you could join us. Saturday at eight. I'll consult with my husband, but yes, we'd love to attend. That's very generous of you to invite us, Mom replied. They departed an hour later, leaving me with a jumble of emotions. Mom cut through my thoughts, asking how I felt when he kissed me. I didn't know how to respond, nor did I want to, but the invitation to their home meant I'd have to continue being the girl he knew as Lily. Given what happened in the kitchen, I wasn't sure I wanted to go. We'll need to find you a new party dress and shoes, and perhaps another hair appointment. What do you say, Lily? After all this effort you've put in to set me up, how could I possibly decline? We, we did not set you up. We don't know those people, and we had no involvement in the res. The nails. All right, I knew they'd be tough to remove, but you were aware of that beforehand, so no complaints there. The real question now is, will you go? Then I slipped up. He's kinda cute, isn't he? With a sigh, fine, I'll go, but this is absolutely the last time, mom. We'll see about that. But why don't we go find you a lovely party dress? We have almost three hours before your father gets home, plenty of time. Why hasn't dad said anything about me dressing as a girl every day? I thought he'd be more, opposed. You can't mention that I told you, all right? I nodded in agreement. You bear a striking resemblance to his youngest sister. I know you've heard about the accident, but your father was the one driving that night, not your grandfather. He never forgave himself when she passed away. Seeing you allows him to pretend she's still with us, but he'd never admit it, so please, never bring it up. 
I promised not to, and then Mom and I headed to the mall. The dress I chose was white with a floral print, a round neckline, and sleeveless, falling just above the knee. We also purchased white heels and a full slip, which I later learned was called a petticoat. Mom added a package of panties and two more plain white bras. I didn't bother questioning why, if I had to wait for the nail acrylics to dissolve, I'd need clean clothes to wear. It was obvious. Just as we were about to leave, I spotted them. Are those what I think they are? Yes, Mom exclaimed, and those will solve a lot of problems. Let's see if they have your size. By the time we were set to depart for the party, I had grown accustomed to the new additions, and ditching the corset was a relief. The padded panty and silicone forms gave me the desired shape, and the dress hugged me perfectly. I opted for simple button earrings in a soft pastel green, foregoing a necklace, though Mom insisted I wear one of her rings. Dad kept stealing glances at me, but he remained cordial, so I said nothing. As we pulled up in front of the mansion, a valet took the car after assisting Mom and me out, and we strolled to the front door together. I thought I glimpsed a flash, like a camera, but dismissed it the moment Liam opened the door. He greeted us warmly, shook Dad's hand, kissed Mom's cheek, but lingered with mine. If you don't mind, sir, would you allow me to escort Lily into the salon? Liam asked. Of course, Dad replied, eliciting another smile from Liam. He took my hand, leading me through the house into a vast room already teeming with guests. He made the rounds, introducing me to people. Lost in the crowd, I accidentally bumped into a man, immediately starting to apologize until I realized who it was. Mr. President, allow me to introduce Miss Cynthia Stickney, Liam said. Miss Stickney, I'm charmed. Liam, tell me, how do you always end up with the prettiest girls? The president inquired. Luck, I suppose, sir, Liam replied. Will Cynthia be your guest for the dinner? The president asked. I haven't asked her yet, sir. Turning to me, the president smiled and, in his Texas drawl, said, I cannot have you let the poor boy down, my dear. So please, be my guest for the dinner. Certainly, sir, I agreed, if you like, I'll be there, of course. I didn't even pause to consider the invitation. When a man like that invites you, you say yes. As we moved away, Liam mentioned he'd like to accompany me to the dinner, prompting me to ask, what dinner? Where? I thought it was here. Oh no. It's at the White House. It's one of those stuffy state dinners. But, of course, I am obligated to attend, and I would love nothing more than to have you on my arm that night. Your stunning beauty and my good fortune will surely make others envious, he explained. But, when is this dinner? Next month, on the third. We shall fly there in our personal jet, of course, but my mother will insist on a room close to ours so she can watch over you. She's rather fond of you, you know. By the time we caught up with my parents, I was a bundle of nerves. I pulled Mom aside into a secluded corner and spilled out what had transpired. Mom, this was supposed to be a one-day thing, then it became a week, now two, but this is almost a month away. I can't just vanish like I did last time. What if someone contacts us or does a background check on me? They'll find out I don't exist. I can't. Calm down, Mom interrupted urgently. We were also invited. But about the other matter. I've mentioned before that I think you don't mind dressing as a girl, and since you've been doing it so well, why not continue? Is that why you put those nails on me, Mom? You must have known they're hard to remove, so. Perhaps. Maybe I did. But the fact remains that you've allowed this to happen all on your own. You could have easily told Liam what was going on when he returned the earring, not dressed as a girl, or even told him outright, but you didn't, did you? Mom paused before adding, Lily, if you want to go as Liam's guest, that's your decision, just as it's your decision if you say no. Your father is starting to worry about you dressing up, but if you have a good reason. Oh, there you are. It was Liam's mother. May I speak with you, my dear? In private. I'll go find my husband, Mom said, giving my hand a reassuring squeeze as she left. Let's go to the library. It's quiet, and we can chat there. 
I followed her into the library, watching as she closed the door and took a seat. You're quite lovely, Cynthia, and it's clear that Liam thinks so too. You're all he talks about lately. But we have a problem, don't we? Ha! Huh. The fact that you're not actually a girl. That's going to be an issue, especially since my son has his eye on you. So, the question is. But, how did you? I mean, how did I know? Well, it was a costume party, wasn't it? You looked absolutely wonderful that night, and I doubt anyone knew, or ever would. But it was when we got the list from the organizers to return your earring that I discovered there was nobody named Cynthia on the list. Your parents were there, of course, but under their names was yours. It's really Henry, isn't it? Softly, almost a whisper, I replied, yes, mm, but I never planned on. I'm sure this isn't what you planned on, my dear. Maybe it was just a series of events that led you here. However, the fact remains that we're faced with a dilemma, aren't we? Tears welled in my eyes, and I wiped them away with my finger, unable to speak. Tell me the truth, Cynthia, and maybe I can help you. Do you enjoy being a girl as much as it seems? Or are you going to disappear one day? It felt like my soul was being laid bare. It was true that I had come to enjoy dressing as a girl, the attention I received, and even the way Liam looked at me. I had told mom I thought he was cute. What did that make me? Was I becoming so much like a girl that I was starting to think like one? His mother sat there, watching me as my conflicting emotions churned in my head. I wanted to tell her that Lily was here to stay, but what about my parents? And what about Liam? Sooner or later, he would find out, and then what? Slumping in the chair, my knees still locked together, my hands folded on my lap, I looked up, unable to articulate what I truly wanted to say. Just then, the door opened, and in walked my parent. Dad held Mom's hand as they stood by the door. Tell me, Liam's mom said softly, tell me the truth. Oh God, I said with a little sob, I never, what I mean is, I like. I want to, but. Let's just say that Cynthia Michelle will always be with us, shall we? Now. I think your parents have something to say. Lily, Dad said with a quaver in his voice, you know this isn't what we had planned for you. It was only a party, after all. But we've been watching you very carefully lately, and even though it's as plain as day that you like being a girl, we're telling you that you can quit any time, and we'll never mention it again. But if you want to be the girl we see sitting here, you'll have to say so. You'll have to tell me, us, that this is what you want. You're seventeen years old now, and quite capable of making up your own mind, so we aren't in any position to tell you what's right and what isn't. If, Mom said, walking over and placing her hand on my shoulder, you decide that this is for you, then we all need to know. I promise you that we won't be angry, and we'll do everything in our power to support you in being the girl we all see sitting here, but you have to tell us, honey. Liam. He won't. He'll never know, my dear. His mother interjected, assuming that your parents have raised you to refrain from certain activities, not until you're married, anyway. I see no reason for my son to find out, do you? And if, by some chance, this romance blossoms, it won't matter by the time you get to that point, will it? Unable to vocalize my agreement, I grabbed both mom's and Liam's mom's hands, nodding in affirmation, stepping into the unknown at that very moment. Mom pulled me to my feet, embraced me, then I saw Dad, still standing by the door, and approached him. He wrapped his arms around me, hugged me, then spoke softly, always be the lady that your mother is, Lily, okay? I will, you know I will. After quickly freshening up in the bathroom to clear my eyes, I stepped out of the room. Liam's mom was waiting for me. Taking me by the arm, she and I returned to the main room together. I spotted my parents conversing with a man I hadn't yet met. As she began to introduce me to him, she whispered, I'm going to introduce you to the finest plastic surgeon in the country. I mentioned to him that I had a young lady in need of his help, and he graciously offered his assistance. Here he is now, tall and distinguished, with a fringe of hair just over his ears and a warm smile, my initial impression was that he exuded success and sophistication. Wilson. 
This is the young lady I mentioned to you. Could you see her? Perhaps you can help her. For you. Anything, Madeline. I'm at your service. I'm still married, you rascal, she teased. This is Cynthia Michelle Stickney, the girl I spoke to you about. I'm honored, my dear. Your beauty surpasses even Madeline's. Handing me his card, he encouraged me to contact him. I nearly embraced him but refrained, instead seeking out my dad. I needed to understand why he consented to my being a girl. If it was solely because of some resemblance to someone else, I wouldn't proceed. I'd revert to being myself before taking any further steps. His comprehension of my feelings had to be genuine, otherwise, any efforts on my part would be futile. I found him conversing with the president, sipping on a double whiskey with soda. Mm. Dad, can we talk for a moment? Of course, honey. Excuse me, sir, my daughter needs me. I guided him back to the library, turned, and embraced him before speaking. Dad, you're not upset with me, are you? I mean, I won't continue with this if it's merely because I resemble someone else. I can't. I'm me, not anyone else, and believe me, it's already challenging enough. Tell me the truth, Dad. I trust you. He paused briefly. No, honey, I'm not upset with you. Your mother spoke to you, didn't she? I nodded in affirmation. It's true, you do bear a resemblance to her, but that's not why I consented to this. Frankly, I'm as opposed to it as any father would be. However, I can't ignore what I see with my own eyes. If I were to put a stop to it now, you'd likely resume once you turn 18, when I'd have no authority to intervene, right? I remained silent. So, I'd rather have you under your mother's guidance, learning everything about being a young lady, rather than navigating it alone and unprepared. That's why I agreed, it's the sole reason, okay? Okay, dad, or should I say daddy? Dad is just fine. Let's not rush into things. As we re-entered the grand room, I held on to his arm, wearing a smile. My Cinderella tale seemed poised for a pleasant conclusion. Then, my gaze fell upon Liam, twirling with another girl, slightly older than me, and remarkably beautiful. It sparked an unfamiliar pang of jealousy, but I contained it. Just then, a man entered and rang a bell, announcing that dinner was ready. I settled beside Mom while Liam was seated at the opposite end of the table with the other girl. Wine flowed freely, and then, Ladies and gentlemen, we are honoured by the presence of the President this evening, and I extend my gratitude to him, came the announcement, followed by applause. Many of you have observed our son dancing with the lovely young lady seated beside him. Allow me to introduce our daughter, Melanie Liamton. His sister. She was his sister, but I happen to know that his eye is on another young lady. Miss Cynthia Stickney. Applause erupted, undoubtedly causing me to blush. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of Miss Stickney, and frankly, I'm looking forward to it. Perhaps Liam will divert more attention her way than he does to his computer games. This elicited laughter and a grin from Liam. Let's dine, he concluded, taking his seat. Following dinner, Liam and his sister sought me out. After the introductions, she took my arm and drew me aside. Goodness, Liam mentioned you were cute, but you're stunning. Now I understand why he can't stop talking about you. As long as he continues to feel that way. Mom suggested we chat. Can I come over tomorrow? We could go shopping or something. Maybe grab lunch. Sure, I suppose. What time? Nine. Liam and I danced a few, then we walked out on the veranda, and in the moonlight, he once again swept me into his arms and kissed me, but I was no longer unsure of myself, and returned his kiss with one of my own. I felt as if that chasm of doubt about myself had been bridged, and with Liam holding me, I felt as if I had finally found the truth about myself. By the time we got home I was so wound up that I couldn't sleep, and lay there in bed wondering when the dream would fade away, returning me to my mundane life. I wasn't even out of bed when mom came into my room and sat on the bed. Morning honey. Time to get up. Ara, do I have to? Yep. Melanie will be here in a while, and you have to get dressed, 
So rise and shine. Once I was standing upright, I'll call the doctor and make an appointment for you. But for right now, I think it's time we took one more step. I'll glue the silicone forms on your chest. That way you'll feel at least a bit more like a girl. And also, you've never worn anything that wasn't full skirted, so you've never had to worry about bulges, but I think it's time that you did something about that. You can wear a skirt, but I think slacks would be better, so I'll loan you a pair of mine. You can get some of your own while you're out today. By the time mom left the room, I had forms attached to my chest, so I went all the way and used some tape to hide my male parts. I did my makeup, got dressed in a top and mom's slacks, my gym shoes, and added some jewellery. By the time Melanie arrived I was back to being a girl again. Melanie and I hit it right off, and I felt as if she were my own sister. Cruising the mall, I bought another dress, some skirts and tops, plus jeans, and some shorts and shoes. Melanie wasn't any slouch, buying new shoes, some skirts and some very sexy lingerie. She told me that she had someone she wanted to impress. I could guess she had a boyfriend by the way she talked. By the time we got back to my house, she and I had bonded, and I felt as if I had known her all my life. I went to see the doctor the next day, unsure what he knew, but he didn't flinch when he gave me a physical and found out. After we talked, he suggested something and I agreed, so he did it for me. When I got home I still had the silicone forms glued on, but I also had a prescription for female hormones, and one other very special gift, but I didn't say anything. That was private. In time Liam and I reached the point where I felt comfortable enough to let him put his hand in my sweater, and when he cupped my chest I felt a shiver run through me. He wanted more but didn't get it, and although he did have his hand in my panties once, that was as far as we went. I wasn't a girl, and wasn't about to do anything until I was. Melanie and I grew very close, while Liam, his dad and mine all got very chummy. Eventually it happened. I was 19 at the time, but with Liam away at sea, he never knew about my surgery, and nobody ever told him. Melanie was in the hospital with her mom, which meant that she knew, but for how long I didn't know, and didn't find out until a few years later that she had always known, she told me that her mom had told her. I guess it didn't matter, because to this day she and I are still like sisters. As we re-entered the grand room, I held on to his arm, my smile beaming. Cinderella's tale is but a creation of someone's imagination, yet it manages to weave its way into our lives unexpectedly, its moral, or perhaps even its storyline, replayed at times with delightful outcomes. My name is Lily, a moniker bestowed upon me by my mother to embody my role that evening. While my mother assumed the guise of the fairy godmother, the true matriarchal figure was Liam's mother, and my prince charming, naturally, is Liam. The wicked stepsisters never materialized, unless one counts Natalie and her cohorts, the ones who attempted to pilfer my jewelry. However, in the end, my prince found me, and more significantly, I discovered myself.